Think you're a twit not getting into Twitter today? Well, some of our Twitter followers are saying you might be smart. One tweeting, no less. I would wait a bit on Twitter, let the dust settle. Another, hype will cause early gains followed by losses, just like Facebook. Buy for the long term. We got Lori Rothman here with us at Yeti Chang. They agree that it might be best to wait out something like this, as it would be with the. Uh, IPOs in general, right, uh, Lori? Just see the how the well, dust. Well, the bottom line is this company, Twitter, is not making a profit. In fact, it's been posting a loss and probably will for another year. That said, I predicted a successful IPO, and the executives and the underwriters couldn't have. Uh, promoted this and priced this any better. But folks, look at the conditions. I mean, this is the hottest IPO market in five years. You've got the market itself hitting record highs, it seems, every day here. Yeah. Yodi, what do you think? You know, uh, Neil, uh, Twitter definitely set a record today. I think it has itself become the most Twittered company on Twitter. I say that fast <laughs> three times. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, over the long term, I like the space. I like the potential of the company. Don't forget, they only have monetized about maybe, what, one-third of their business uh, uh, in the U.S., only half the business internationally. So I think they have potential. But I agree with Laurie. I think short-term speaking, valuation is way too high to get into it. I will wait for sure. Uh, all right, switching gears, guys. Abercrombie is in a pinch, apparently, and now it's CEO's backing down. CEO Mike Jeffries famously saying that large people shouldn't shop at his store. He was done with me right at that point. <laughs> me too. But now, that, you. But now Abercrombie's <laughs> holiday outlook is bleak and the store is now offering larger sizes. Now, Laura, you say oh, that stop. chance. That chance <laughs> Americans are going to give this one another chance. Well, all right. If you are, if you've had it with these superficial elitist retailers, Lululemon CEO this week basically blamed the yoga pants malfunction right on the women wearing them, then yeah, not, not for good. you. But here's the thing, shares of um, Abercrombie & Fitch are off a quarter. They've lost a quarter of their value in the last year, and the CEO is acknowledging their missteps here. I think they might be poised for a turnaround, and if you buy that strategy, this might be an interesting entry point. What do you think, Eddie? I mean, I always think that once a, co a company makes a big PR mistake, it, it takes a while for, from which to recover, mm -hmm. but, but, but it may be, maybe it's been in PR held too long. Yeah. You know, Neil, it's a tough business. If you think about all these retail clothiers, right? They're like a bushel of hard shell crafts. They're just clawing their way to the top. Once they get to the top, they can't stay there. And that's what happened to Abercrombie. For the past two years or so, they were the trendsetters for teens. And now it's not working anymore, so they're switching strategies. You know, they want to start to uh, tailor themselves uh, tailor themselves toward the larger people. But on, by the same token, I'm telling you, it's interesting. Anthropology in Bethesda, my neck of the woods, has opened a store to tailor themselves to the petite people. Uh -huh. So which weight class will win? Well, we shall we see. We shall see. Just all get right. rid of the shirtless salesman and I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Anyway, that, is, that music you're hearing, it's time for our nightcap. Uh, before you go to bed at night, Lori, you're here to tell you what to expect uh, from, among other things, I guess a big jobs number. Yeah, right? this is one to watch and everyone's kind of writing it off because of the government shutdown saying it'll create noise in the report. But I think it's going to be interesting because we have the, the jobless Jobs claims, report, yeah, right? okay. uh, we had the jobless claims this morning showing improvement, job creation moving in the right direction, certainly not as robust as we'd like to see, we say this month after month, but there's the expectation, 125,000 non-farm payrolls expected to be added. I think it'll be a significant influence on the direction of the markets tomorrow. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, don't forget, I'm watching the same thing too, but since she's watching already, uh, maybe <laughs> I'll just go watch the football game tonight. But <laughs> You can watch both. Do you think, though, that, uh, you know, whatever growth we see in jobs, it's always fairly anemic, nothing robust yeah, like the old days of recovery. I guess those days are gone. Uh, you know, what do you think? Well, here's the thing. Okay, so the, the economic report this morning, GDP came out today, right. and it was, it, it was an improvement. Sure. But it was an improvement for the wrong reasons. It was an inventory build as opposed to consumer spending. So and it's I not think a real buffer recovery still. Exactly, and I okay. think that that's what we're seeing reflected in the job yeah. situation. Right. And, Neil, and don't forget also, right now, good news is bad news. Bad You're news right is good news, that? right? Yeah. You're right. Exactly. All right, guys. So I think either Thank way you. it comes out, it's going to be good. Good night.